Hello, this is Roland. Welcome. Today I want to continue talking about courage and confidence. And I, if you haven't watched the first three videos, I re recommend you do because there's a lot of really good information in them. In a sense, this video here is kind of a recapitulation. Courage is being grounded in what's right. Okay. You know, and to do that, you have to be close to your intuition. For example, I'll give you a couple of examples of people who were grounded in their intuition. Uh, one example would be uh, Albert Einstein. Where did his insights, his discoveries, his discoveries, where did they come from? They came from his intuition. He somehow realized something, see? And it was, perhaps it was a gift to him. Perhaps it was a gift. He didn't, he didn't invent his ideas. He discovered them. And, the reason, and he discovered them through intuition, a wordless intuition, a hunch, an insight. And then he used his imagination in order to, to make thought experiments, okay? And he used his, uh, his intellect in order to do math and to write his um, um, research and so on and to talk about his discoveries, but his discoveries came from intuition. Okay, so he was close to his intuition. That made him made him special, but we, we ought to all be that way. Now, another example of someone who was close to his intu intuition, I think, in fact, I'm sure of it, I'm positive of it, was uh, Wyatt Earp. Wyatt Earp was a frontier marshal, famous frontier marshal. And there's an excellent book about Wyatt Earp, and it's called Wyatt Earp, Frontier Marshal, by Stuart Lake, last name Lake, L-A-K-E. And it's a biography, okay, and it's kind of like a, a docudrama type. It's, it, it, he, he makes it interesting, so it's like you're reading a, a novel, okay. And one of the things that you will discover when you read that book about Wyatt Earp, he was very good. And he didn't like to have to use his weapon either. And he, in fact, he rarely had to. He rarely had to. There were some really bad guys, very bad people. And often he would, um, he would um, get them in line, okay, for the, the vast majority of the time without even having to use his, he never even, he didn't even draw his weapon. But he, he moved in his own time and space, and that's something that I was talking about in my previous videos. He moved in his own time and space. Okay, he didn't react. He didn't react. He, he. So what he did then came as a surprise. See, a surprise. And I'll let you read the story so you can see, for example, what he would do. But he surprised them. And they were so shocked and so surprised, see, that uh, they were already defeated right there. And, by, and in very short order. And the other thing is he, he didn't waste any time. If there was something he had to do, then he did it. And another book I would, that I would recommend is quite, that I think is good in, in showing you some of these principles being applied would be um, the Louis L'Amour Westerns. Okay, there's a lot of them. I haven't read... I've read only a handful. They're all good. The ones I've read are all good. But I would particularly recommend that you that you um, that you look for the Hopalong Cassidy ones. You can Google search Louis L'Amour Hopalong Cassidy uh, novels. He wrote four of them, and they're very good because um, for a lot of reasons. The, 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 what I like about is the hero is a good guy. The hero is honest, fair, kind, noble, brave. See, everything you'd want in a hero. Everything you'd want in a husband. <laughs> okay, everything you'd want in a leader. A and, um, and he had to face the bad guys. See, and he defeated the bad guys. Now, but, but what I wanted to say is, he also moved in his own time and space. He didn't react. He moved, okay? But another principle, which I'll bring out in this video, which I don't think I did so much in the others, is that, is that if you have something to do, then do it. 
okay, just but without anger, without resentment. And I didn't come up with this idea either. I saw it. Someone else said it. But when I see it, I see how good it is. And I couldn't, I can't say it any better. Okay, so it's this, it's this simple little phrase. If you have something to do, do it without resentment. If you have something to say, then say it without resentment. Okay? And it's very important. There's a lot of wisdom in that little, little sentence there. First of all, if you have something to do, then do it. Let's just take a very simple example. And you all know exactly what I mean. And you know that I'm, in, you know that I'm right. Okay? Because your intuition, your common sense tells you that I'm right. If you have something to do, you've got to pay a bill. You've got to sweep the floor. Okay? You've got something that you need to do. Then do it. Because the longer you sit around and procrastinate and wait and push it off, see, it, it, um, it's on your mind. It's like a burden on your mind. And if it's something that's slightly unpleasant, slightly unpleasant, you know, you've got to... I, I can't think of an example, but it's slightly unpleasant. Then we have a tendency, people have a tendency to, to put it off and put it off. But you know what happens then? Then resentment builds. Resentment, anger build up, builds up. Then when you go and do it, you got the wrong energy. It's anger. And the wrong motive and the wrong timing. Now you're doing it just to get it, just to get it over with. Or you're doing it to get, let your anger out, out, see, or something like that. Or you're doing it because now it's, it's, you waited too long and now you, you, you don't have any choice. You have to go, see. You're better off if you have something to do. If you need to sweep the floor, then just sweep it. Okay, if you got to, if you got to pay a bill, then pay it. If you got to tell somebody you don't have the money right now, but you'll have it, you know, soon, then just call them up and just tell them. Don't wait for it. Don't wait. Just do it. Okay? See, see how easy that is? You know, because that way you'll have done it. Does it take courage? Sometimes it takes a little bit, almost like courage, doesn't it? A little bit. You have to find a little energy. But don't wait for, the, for anger energy or resentment energy. See, your pressure energy, your fear energy. If you have something to do, then just do it. So, the very simple example is um, if, um, I'll just make something up. Um, somebody walks by, and every time they walk by, they throw, litter, they throw a piece of litter, you know, an old soft drink bottle or a cup or a rolled up McDonald's cheeseburger wrapping or something. They throw it in your yard. I'm just making something up. So you see that you, okay, the best thing is the, ver the first time you see it, you see them throw, they're walking by, you happen to be standing by the window, by the door or something. And you see it, then if you can, then you just immediately say, hey, excuse me, would you mind picking that up, please? You threw that in my yard, please pick it up. Okay. Usually they will, they're so surprised. Then they won't do it again because you, you came out of nowhere and shocked them. Or if you see him do it once, okay, well, maybe it was a mistake. Then the next time you see him do it, then immediately speak up. Don't wait. Don't let, don't let it, the, the situation go by where they do it every day for days, three days, four, five, six days, seven days. And what's happening? Well, they're getting used to doing it. Plus, they know that you're weak. See? They know you're weak. Because if you weren't weak, you would have said something right away. So you're weak. They know that. And secondly, what's happening is your is anger is building and resentment. Anger and resentment. Then finally go out there, and then what are you gonna do? You're gonna you're gonna mess it up somehow. Or worse yet, you don't say anything and you just let them keep dumping on you. Or worse or you go out there and then you say something in a in a too harsh or mean or angry, and they see the anger and then they judge you for the anger. See? Another example, you're standing in line. Somebody cuts in front of you. I've used this example thousands of times over the years, okay? But it's just, you're standing in line at uh, Starbucks or wherever. Somebody cuts in front of you. Say, then immediately say, excuse me, I was here first. Thank you very much. See? Immediately. Don't, don't wait. Don't let anger build. See? Now, 
let's suppose that they uh, they actually were with someone. That's happened to me one. That happened to me one time. They were with somebody. Somebody was there in front of them, and they temporarily had stepped away to go do something or go wash their hands or something, and they came back to be with the person that they were with. So they actually were ahead of me. So I said, "Excuse me, I was here first. And then they said, "Then they said." Oh, I'm sorry, I was already here. I just went to the, you know, my friend is here, and I just went to the restroom and came right back. And then I said, oh, I'm sorry. See, but you see, there, it, nothing came of it. You know why? Because I wasn't angry when I said it. I said, oh, I'm sorry, I was, I was mistaken. See, but I wasn't angry. See, so it was still okay. It was still all right. We all had a good chuckle, and it was a happy, it was instead of an unhappy moment, it was a happy moment. So it was nothing, see? But what you do is you wait and wait and wait, and then you then you say something, and and it's uh, with anger. Okay. So those are just very simple examples. Every situation is different. Okay. Every and sometimes sometimes nothing needs to be said. Okay. For sometimes nothing needs to be said. People self correct. See, I've seen that. I've seen where. Somebody did something, and I was I was ready to uh, immediately say something. But I saw I saw them stop, and and they looked back, and then I'm just using this example of throwing the uh, litter. I'll just keep stay with that example. Then they went back and got it. See, I didn't even say anything, so nothing needed to be said. See, and a lot of times too when you're with you fathers, you're at home. See, sometimes you have to speak up, Dad. Dad, can I go? Um, can I get in the car with the, these uh, these guys from uh, the other side of town? Can I get in the car with them? And even though it's you know eleven o'clock at night, can I get in the car with them and go out and do some stuff? No, you can't. See, that, that's easy, right? That that one's easy. It doesn't take courage to say that. And uh, there's it's nothing to wait for. It's just no, you can't. Okay. But other times, you know, it's some kind of a little reasonable request. Well, maybe it'd be okay, maybe not. It, it all depends. See, so I can't tell you. See, every moment is different. That, now, now, the other thing I want to say is, so now do you see how I said you move in your own time and space? And if you have something to do, you just do it. Okay, without resentment. Okay, and the anger doesn't build. And uh, then the other thing is, uh, uh, oh, and the other thing I want to say, let's suppose you, 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 you blow it. Let's say, you know, somebody does something and you, you, you say something, but you say it with anger. Okay. Okay. So let's say that it needed to be said, what they, what they were out of, they were out of order and it needed to be said. Okay. But you said it with anger. Then you know what you can say? You can say, I'm sorry about the anger, but I'm still right about what I said. So you admit your the, the anger was wrong, but you're still right about what you said. Now, other times, see, you, you ha you're you so used, to, most of us, are, most of you are so used to being wimps, saying nothing, clamming up, see, never speaking up, just sitting around judging people and resenting, not saying anything, that um, when, if you, if you get my meditation, which is important. See, it's very important to get the meditation because it reconnects you to your ground of being. The intuition that I talked about, okay, you need to be connected to your intuition. And then when you are connected with your intuition, then you will see your own wrong. That's the first thing you're going to see. See, we're, most of us are so busy judging everyone else, but you'll see your own wrong. Your own, you'll see your own resentment, your own anger. You didn't even know they were there. So you'll see them and say, oh my God, okay. And then, then you'll, you know, repent of that and be sorry about that and let it pass. So if you're angry at your wife or you're angry at your husband, or you're angry at your child or you're angry at your neighbor, okay, then you best not say anything for a while. You get the meditation, practice it diligently, get centered, okay, and, uh, just go about your go about your life, no, but then noticing your own wrongs, which you never saw before, and repenting of them, and letting go of the anger. Okay? And then when the anger is gone, or and as, well, especially when the resentment is gone, okay, then then you can begin speaking up.
Wait until the resentment is gone. If you speak up resentfully, then you're going to blow it. You're going to mess it up. And I have, there are people who listen to my videos about speaking up and they go out and practice it, but they haven't, they haven't really let go of the resentment. And so they, they mess it all up. They say, well, it doesn't work. So they go back to being all, they, they go back to being um, their old passive aggressive self, sitting around passively and saying nothing and saying nothing and saying nothing and saying nothing and then exploding with anger. See, so they never get it right. Okay. So you meditate, let go of the resentment. Then you can speak up. Okay? And when you do, see, now there's no more resentment. So now you can say, if something needs to be said, you just say it. But then you know what? When you say it, then some of the suppressed anger will bubble, bubble up. It's been down there for a long time. You didn't even know it was there. It's still there. So it's not new anger. It's, it's old anger coming up, bubbling up. So there it is. There's the anger. Then you observe it. Then you say to the person, I'm sorry about the anger. Okay, but I'm still right about what I said. Okay. So, I think I've covered uh, some ground here. But you see how you have to be connected to your intuition, which is from God? You have to watch the, the other videos. I'm going to make a playlist. But you can find, find the other ones. One, two, three. This is number four. And then I also have some videos on uh, uh, YouTube videos on uh, speaking up, especially the topic of speaking up to someone who, who did you wrong when you were like a kid. You know, someone who really, really did you wrong. Your dad or your mom or something. See, but um, you, you need to watch my videos so you can see how, how to go about it. Otherwise, you're going to mess it up. You, you can you could end up in worse shape. Because they're the ones that can press all your buttons. See? They're the ones that did you in. So you have to be ready for for the, for that. Be prepared for it. So, And the way to get prepared for it, you can watch my the videos, but also is to start meditating and let go of resentment. Don't do anything until you've let go of the resentment. It's very important. Okay? All right. So I think I've... Uh, done enough in uh, this video and uh, we'll see you in the next video.